Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Beast for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna get those damn pop-ups down. That's, our, that's one of our main focuses. We gotta get those down so we can ship them out to get them repaired. So we're gonna figure out a way to get them down and then get the thing out of the way so we can get behind there, access that last bolt, and then pull them out of the car. I, I have no idea how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna figure out a way. And if this episode took a long time to come out, it's because it took a long time for those to come out. And after that, I have a bunch of parts to show you for this car. I got like 15,000 bucks in parts. I could have just bought a whole different car for that amount of money, but uh, hey, gloss over that. I got 15K in parts to show you for this car. Stay tuned. Before we get down to those pop-ups, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by the mobile game Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is one of the most ambitious RPG games of 2019. It has just been released and I can tell you they really hit their mark. Playing Raid is one of the most immersive experiences that you're going to find on a smartphone. It really can only be compared with like the PC and console titles. And the best part is that it's totally free. Raid also has all the features that you would expect from a brand new RPG title like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. But on top of that, it has the highest level of performance for a mobile game. Like, you can look and see how crazy the level of detail is on these champions. Raid is getting really big really fast. So like with all games, you want to get in early, and starting now is going to give you a huge head start. There's also an upcoming special launch tournament with some crazy in-game prizes, as well as physical prize packs that you're not going to want to miss. So guys, use the link in the description to download Raid for free, and if you use my exclusive link, you'll get started with 50,000 extra silver and a free epic hero, courtesy of the dev team for their new player program and I will see you in game now let's get down to work so we're getting started on these pop-ups I'm gonna dedicate an entire day to these pop-ups if I need to they got to come out they got to come down they got to come out so here's what we've learned so far for the pop-ups to come out this unit and this convertible top unit need to be lifted out of the car as one so I can get access to the back of that bolt right there for that to happen pop-ups have to go down I've learned all this stuff from a Lamborghini technician now, the problem is, is they don't know how to make the pop-ups go down. There's no technical documentation out there recording how to lower these pop-ups once they have exploded and came out here. This is a one-time use pyrotechnic device, so these aren't meant to be reused. So what they kind of advise is just take a saw, chop this off right here, then you can allow your hard top or your soft top to come up, you can access the rest of the bolts that you need to take this thing off, and, and then remove them that way, buy new ones of these, and then new ones of those, and then have them programmed separately, and then you can put them back in the car. What we're trying to do here is save ourselves 500 bucks by not chopping these off. Alright, if you're wondering what all those sparks were, we exhausted all other things. We got the pyrotechnic device out of here, uh, and, and it, was a, it was a plunger type, so it plunged a thing down, and we, we got access to it and pulled it back up. Didn't help. Tried everything we could with this access hole. It does get us access to some things, and we pushed on them and pulled on them and did different things. Nothing worked. So uh, it might be the case of once we get one of these out of here, then we kind of discover how it works, and then we could do it on the next one. But for now, we had to continue on to more evasive procedures. So I'm trying to cut the top plate of this off, just nicely cut through the seam welds right here, here, and here, and the, the, the tack welds on the top so we can pop this plate off, and I'm hoping we'll be able to then uh, dig down into this device a little bit more, maybe pull off all the stuff over here that holds this thing from going down. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, we got nowhere. Uh, we learned so much about this mechanism that, that is inside here, that runs inside here and keeps this thing stuck up, but we just cannot get it to do what we need it to do to free that bar up. And I think it has to do with the, air, the airbag pyrotechnic stuff that's in there. So um, we got two options. First option, viewer requested, Build a cross member right there, mount like a turret machine gun type of thing up there, full apocalypse build, Huracan. That's option number one. Option number two, which I'm gonna start with, is uh, 
in the Lamborghini manuals for the servicing of this thing to pull this whole unit out, it's, it's this structure right here and this stuff right here and some of this stuff all comes out as one unit. Uh, there are a bunch of bolts. There's some through here. There's some back here. They're like right about there. And then there's some easier to access ones like right about there. Now those, some of them you're supposed to have the top up and some of them you're supposed to have the top down to access. But I think the ones that are like top up are these ones which are not very hard to get at even with the top where it's at right now at this kind of half cock position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to take most of those bolts off. I'll get all those bolts off and let's just see if it kind of loosens things up. Cause as it is right now, this thing, doesn't doesn't budge, it doesn't go anywhere. I wanna see what happens when I get all of those bolts off if it starts to loosen things up at all. Things are starting to budge. I have a feeling this might actually this, this thing might actually free up a little bit. All we gotta do is pull these things off of their stands, free them up so I can get my hand behind this thing, uh, undo one bolt, slide it out, and then these things will come out. Well, this one needs its four top ones out too. But it's five bolts. We've taken about 75 bolts off of this car and, and a good portion of the half of the interior rear out just to get access to that, that one lower bolt down there. But uh, so we're gonna center the car over the uh, ceiling hoist. That thing's only good for about 500 pounds. So if we have too much resistance or anything, it's really not gonna work. It'll we'll probably rip my roof down. Uh, anyways, so we're gonna center the car over it. Two more straps, one goes here, one goes there. They're gonna come up and then we're gonna try and lift it all kind of as a whole. We did the damn thing. We got the bowels of the soft top unit out of the car. So what this does now that this is all the way lifted up, I'm so glad I installed that on the last, uh, on the last build. Uh, we can now access this bolt that's right back here and, uh, and we'll be able to loosen it up, slide it out, and then that will allow this thing to just slide out. And now we can see our pretty engine. Look at those intake plenums, that's so cool. Very cool. Very cool. I'm stoked on that. So, one bolt left on this, pull it out, set it off for repair, needs a little welding. The other one, five bolts, pull that guy out. We did it. Yay! Now I just gotta remember where those 67 bolts go back. Oh my God. I would be very willing to bet that the reason that this car actually went to auction and ended up with a salvage title is because this went from one tech to the next tech to the next tech and they could not figure out how to get those pop-ups down and that since the Lamborghini technical like documentation says you have to have the roof up to do a lot of the unbolting, they just said, well, we can't get the roof up, so we can't do the unbolting, so we can't do the job and then after it goes through enough shops and it can't do the job, eventually it's gonna get salvaged out because they're gonna say no one can do the work. And I bet you anything that's why this car ended up in my hands. All right, we got the pop-ups out. So if anybody runs into this in the future, I know there's not a lot of Huracan owners out there, but this car was made in a huge quantity. So I do want to just go over it. There is a push button right here. If you can build a tool, we built a custom made tool and we pushed on this thing super hard and we weren't able to push on it hard enough to disengage it. But if you can, you push on this thing hard enough, it'll disengage and you can slide that thing down, but you don't even really need to. If, if you're trying to do what we did to get them out, there is, a bolt that goes through this access hole right here. There's a bolt right here, two right here, a nut right here, same on the other side. And then your main bolts right here and here that hold these posts in. And uh, once you take out that main support beam as well, then you can hoist this whole unit up and that'll get you access to that fifth and lower bolt on the back like what we just did and take them out. And you can access all of these with the roof in the down position. So that's what we've done. Those are off to get repaired. Now we are gonna bolt the car back together, that way we just don't lose part. There's you know, a good 50 bolts that we took out of this thing. We're just gonna bolt everything up for the time being so we don't lose track of anything.
boys, we have done it. We got this thing down all the way for the first time. Um, what else did we do? We, adjust, we readjusted this uh, rear windshield to match up with the, the roof line. It's all together and all shut for the first time. I'm so excited. So that's just temporarily fit in on here because obviously we got to get back in here to do more work to replace those. Uh, but that's good for now. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to power it on, uh, move the seats back, jump in and try and close the roof for the first time. I'm excited. I really hope it works. <laughs> Well, we got no love from the soft top. The soft top can't go up because it's saying that this window, it doesn't know its position. I'm thinking that's obviously a software thing. We've got it all plugged in and we double checked everything and all that's looking good. So it's a software thing, we need to reset it. That's why I'm working on getting a diagnostic tool for this car that'll allow us to reset that module and then it will go up and down as expected. So I'm not too worried about it. Everything's there, nothing's broken, nothing's changed. Uh, we didn't used to have that air before. We unplugged it, we plugged it back in. Now it's mad. Probably a good reason to do all this work with the battery unplugged, but hey, you lazy and you learn. So the next thing I want to do is show you guys some of the parts that we got. I think I got between like 12 and 15 grand worth of parts for this car. I have not unboxed them. I have not checked them out. They're all in the, uh, the house over there. So we're going to go ahead and start bringing them in one by one, kind of laying them up next to the car and see what they look like. All right, so what we have here, red front bumper, red front fender, silver door, plastic <laughs> fender liner, you know, they only come in one color, door, inner door panel, not really sure. We gotta open up this door and this door panel learn a little bit more about it. We got our um, side skirt, seen better days. This thing is in need of repair, and I'll show you that in a second. And then we have a mystery box. Not really sure what's in that. So uh, for right now, let's go ahead and open up the door and the door panel and see kind of what we have. And then I'll walk you through, what, you know, the details of the other stuff that we have. Mystery box is full of all sorts of good stuff. I was really worried about not having. So I ordered the parts for this car so long ago. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I bought this car quite a long time ago. I bought this in December of 2018. So it's been, a, it's been a long time to get to this point now. And so anyways, after that, you guys saw I was actually vlogging, I was driving, I was in California uh, doing some work and I stopped by Exotic Auto Recycling and I checked out some cars, some donor cars, some donor parts, and I ordered all the parts that I thought I knew for this car. Now I'm sure we don't have everything. I'm 100% sure there's gonna be something that's missing, but right now from the looks of it, we got a pretty comprehensive like starting point. I feel, I feel pretty good about this. So let's just start on the front bumper. So I'm not gonna pretend I know everything about every panel specific thing for every model of these cars, but I believe that this front bumper cover is off of the LP610-4. I think that's what it's off of. Um, I think the 580, which is this, the 580-2, is actually a little bit different of a bumper cover, but I like the look of this one a lot. So I'm happy that we got this one, but this was just by chance what was up, you know, coming up in the, in the salvage parts market. So this is not just a bumper cover though. What's really important to know is, so, uh, Kyle, go ahead and grab that fender for me, thanks. So when you're looking at buying one of these bumpers, you got the cover on the outside here, but the, on the inside, there's this inner skeleton and they cost just as much as the bumper cover. So you can catch a bumper cover online for like 2000 bucks, but the inner skeleton is gonna run you another 1500 bucks. What we also didn't have were all of our parking sensors. So you can see there's parking sensors right here. That whole setup for parking sensors is extremely expensive, extremely expensive. It can run you another thousand dollars or something like that. So we bought this whole thing as a unit for, I have no idea how much money because it was so many months ago, I totally forgot, but I know it was a good deal. And uh, so you can see right here, we have the whole wiring harness and all the setup for the parking sensors. And if we look on the car somewhere down here, I remember seeing the plug hanging out. Uh, she's deep, she's deep in there, but that is the plug for our uh, parking sensors. <coughs> Let me climb back up here. And it also has our uh, extra blinker side markers and our uh, headlight washers. If this car even came equipped with them, I'm not sure if it did, but if it did, 
we're ready to be plumbed up. So that's a great, great find on the whole front bumper assembly. And like I said, I can't remember how much uh, we paid. When we do, every time we do a car, every time we do a build, we do a cost breakdown of exactly how much stuff costs. So you guys know whether or not we like screwed ourselves and spent too much money on a car or if we got a good deal. And this, this price for this will be included. These are not sponsored parts. So this is exactly what you could have bought them for as well. So moving on to the fender, this one's like the most simple basic thing. You just got a fender. It's a chunk of metal, aluminum. It's very lightweight. It's in perfect condition and it bolts on right across there. The only thing that I noticed is that we're missing a little angle bracket right here that I'm gonna have to go ahead and order. Comes off like that, goes like that. You can see on this other side where it sits and it helps hold the fender. So we're gonna need to get that. So I'll be ordering one of those from the same guys. I know that he has one already, so that's no problem. Let's move on to this, uh, this little side skirt here. I gotta do a little investigation around the side skirt real quick and then I'll tell you what we got. So here's our side skirt right here and what I was testing was the, the fitment and making sure that we had all the mounting points that we needed and all the bracketry and everything. And we do, this thing's gonna fit up great. It's got a lot of different bolting up points which is solid, I'm happy about that. We got a banging deal on this and you might've missed this thing flying into the car. So this is the same as that piece that's over there uh, and, and we got a really good deal on both of these because this has a fracture in the polyurethane right here and it needs to be repaired. So I know that 3M makes a really, really good polyurethane repair like epoxy type of resin that you can use. And uh, somebody drop a link in the comment because I forgot the number, the name number of that, but there is one out there. We've done polyurethane re repair before on the channel. It's all gone off really well. This isn't a really good spot to do it because it's like a pretty flat surface and everything like that. So I'm very confident that we'll be able to repair this without too much work. So, uh, well, I mean, good amount of work, but not too much trouble. So anyways, yeah, it's our side skirt. It's gonna bolt up great. I am not worried about that at all. That was like, one of the big question marks for me is because I'd seen on other Huracans that there's some like different mounting stuff right there and stuff like that, but we're good. There's a mounting point right here, matches up with the mounting point right there. I know you probably couldn't see that, but that's where it goes. What's next? Next is our door and door panel, which you guys probably saw the car that this actually came off of. It's been in my video and one of TJ's videos as well. Now the paneling, the paneling is black. And if you guys look over here, our paneling is really cool green. You have green on the side paneling right here and then you have green on the hand part right here which would which would mean we should have we should have green right here where we have this nice Alcantara and then we also have a matching piece right here. That was in our mystery box. All the stuff that we needed for this like all the different hand controls like the controls that do uh, the window or the uh, side mirrors and all that stuff that was all included in there and it all goes into this piece. So for now I, well, what I did was I bought the door as a complete operating working door. So that's door, door glass, glass controllers, uh, all the switches, all the handles, the handle to open the car, all that stuff. I just bought it as one unit. It saved me a lot of money that way. Um, and then rather than driving around without a panel at all, I figured I'll drive around with the wrong color panel until the right one comes up on market. Little bit embarrassing to have a $200,000 car that has the wrong color door panel on one side, but I don't think a lot of people are gonna notice. But as soon as the right one comes up on market, on salvage market, or if anybody's watching that happens to have one for sale, I'll buy it. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna just wait until the right green one comes up, or we'll order it from factory Lamborghini at the end of this build if we have to. But uh, yeah, this, this was helping us like as far as speed and keeping the build going, this is really what we needed. So like I said, that's the door over here. Uh, the door has, the hinges are detached. I think the hinges are right here. So here's our door hinges. This was something I was really worried about. All the mounting hardware. Exotic Auto Recycling really made sure that we didn't get stuck without any of the parts that we need to continue the build. So that's really, really cool of them. So we will, once we attach our hinges, we clean up our door, we install our paneling and our switches and everything like that. We should be able to just throw that door on there. And last, but not least, collars are explosive. <laughs> Ah, right here. Kyle is in the military. He's dealt with bombs before. I have not. Um, this is a this is a, a seat airbag. It it um, it actually has to be salvaged out of another seat. Like they literally have to do this to a seat to get these things out of an uncrashed car, and you can pull it out. Because when you buy a new one from factory, if you want a new airbag, you just have to buy a whole new seat, which costs more than I do. So deep inside here, you can see where this thing gets installed. It gets installed back there and into there. 
comes down here, bolts in, et cetera, et cetera. And then you sew the whole unit back up, obviously plugging it back in once we reset our airbag. So this is airbag number one. Essentially, I'm gonna call them airbags. They're not really, there's pyrotechnics. Two and three, once those all get uh, repaired and fixed and then we reset the computer, the car should be happy and we should have airbags once again, which is very important when we're going back to OEM, but also just very important for a car like this because without the airbag system functioning, the rollovers don't function, the rollers don't function and you're too tall, your head gets just yapped off when you roll this car over. Oh, and last, last, last but not least is a fender liner, which I was really worried about. I totally forgot that I ordered that. Fender liner goes right here, protects the water from going into our trunk, hood, uh, luggage space. Don't, I don't have, I don't own the luggage space stuff. That's one of the only things that I haven't ordered. I t did not know about it because I hadn't opened the hood of this thing until I got to my house. So we still need to get the luggage surround. Uh, that's a little bit too big to be 3D printed, but uh, luggage surround, it looks like I have these trim pieces that go down right here. Uh, so it's mainly we're gonna order that luggage surround and we're gonna order this piece and that should, should call it good for the rest of our ordering. So all of our parts are in. In the next episode, we're gonna we're gonna bolt everything up. We're gonna bolt it all up, and we might even go for a drive. I'm not I'm not sure yet. I haven't made up my mind. Hey, we got some new merch. If you guys like merch, here is a Bees for Broke key tag, and we got Bees for Broke decals. They are back in stock since we're once again broke. I put it on my Lambo key tag. I'm not taking this thing off. Lambo keys, excuse me. Um, so Bees for Broke key tags are in stock. Bees for Broke decals are in stock. All the proceeds of all those things just go to help us support, uh, you know, funding these builds. And the next one is, uh, it's, it's not more expensive, but it's uh, just as expensive. So, so that's why we have sponsors actually. Thank you guys for being patient with all of our sponsored episodes. I appreciate all the support from you guys. All right, that's it. Tomorrow we're back in the shop, bolting everything on. It'll be a fun one. I hope you join us back for that one. I'll see you then. Oh, hey, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, peace.